Hello everyone. Today we're going to continue our mathematical modeling with Geometry Sketchpad classes. And what we're going to do is we're going to animate um, fish in Geometry Sketchpad. Uh, as you can see, you can use geometric principles to uh, simulate aquatic life, and uh, we will learn how to do that. Uh, again, you're going to need Geometry Sketchpad 5.0 or higher, so please open that. And I have already a document open, so I'm going to just add a blank page. And to be able to do this, what we need to first of all do is uh, define the path of the fish. So please go to Graph Define Coordinate System. And Graph, uh, go to Graph again and plot new function. We're going to graph. Uh, what is called the sine function. If you have taken trig, you know what this means. If you have never taken trig, don't worry about it. Uh, but it's a great introduction to uh, wave theory. So this is uh, the sine function. It's going to ask you, do you want to be in degrees or do you want to switch to radians? Uh, if you have never heard of radians, uh, it's just a much more um, tame system of units uh, because it will fit into your screen much better. So I will say just yes, okay? Uh, what I will recommend at this point is let us uh, select the coordinate system, the origin, the grid, and let us uh, actually uh, hide all of these. We will not uh, need. So here is, uh, oops, let's also hide that. Okay, so the way we're going to do this, and let me uh, make sure that uh, I have a point tool here, then I'm going to drop a point here. Let me make the point so it is visible, first of all. So we put a point which is going to be the driver of this uh, fish. So while we are at it, uh, so select the point. Let's create an animation button for the uh, driver. Uh, at this point, uh, bidirectional is probably not a good idea. I would like it to go backwards. It's going to the left on a sine curve, so it's going backwards. Uh, medium speed should be fine. Test your animation button so it does work. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to create a fish uh, using the following method. We're going to create a fish by creating a segment. And let me make this segment a little bit thinner so we can see it better. Um, and this point and that segments, once you select both of them, you can construct a circle by center radius. And what this uh, will do is it will allow you to define two points on this wave function, which will uh, start defining the body of the uh, fish. Uh, I'm going to name this segment here uh, size so that I can remember that I can control the size of the fish by changing this parameter. Once you have this uh, original circle defined, you can continue and use your circle tool. I'm going to go back to the arrow, define a new point. I'm going to now go back to the circle tool, do it again. So what I'm doing in this manner is I'm just creating a fish, and you can see it when it's animated better. Uh, you are creating this uh, levels of uh, the fish, different parts, components of the fish. Uh, you can continue this as much as you want. We're just trying to understand the principle, so I'm going to make it not uh, too large. So I'm going to now hide uh, these circles. We don't need to see the circles anymore, but obviously the uh, points are going to be needed. Okay. Now for the rest of this construction, what we're going to need is uh, something we're going to repeat again and again. So I'd rather have a tool. Uh, we create a tool for that. Uh, it's going to be a segment. And on its right end point, we're going to create, so I select the segment and its right end point, I construct a perpendicular line, okay? Uh, when you do that, select this thing that you just created and go to your custom tool menu, create new tool, uh, call this the perp, uh, 
perpendicular. And um, let's always test our tools once we create them. Um, so as you can see, I can this way create a bunch of perpendiculars uh, with this tool. That's what I'm going to do in a minute. Okay. So now we can go to our original construction and uh, see how we can apply our tool. So I take my tool and I open my hand like that and I do it again. And actually at this point, uh, before we go too far out, let me show you how we will not read the entire uh, perpendicular here, but we're going to need a small segment of it. So what I recommend is you go to your segment tool and on the first perpendicular create a segment and actually you can now hide the rest of the perpendicular uh, and what this will allow you is it will allow you to create uh, a particular size for the vertical uh, dimensions of the fish. So let's do that also for the second perpendicular. You can adjust these later. Again, we'll hide the perpendicular line and we can uh, decide how we want to make these. Uh, and always test that your construction is following suit. Uh, so, initially, it might be a good idea to sort of keep them a little bit separate. So, I'm going to keep using my tool, the perpendicular tool, go from here to there, from here to there from here, oops, from here to there, etc. Okay, but always I'm going to create a segment on the perpendicular, a segment on the perpendicular, because I don't need the infinite line. I just need a segment uh, on the perpendiculars. I'm going to now select the perpendiculars, uh, hide them. Okay, so now you can start seeing how you could weave your... Uh, fish here. Uh, I'm going to start, let's actually make the size more manageable. Uh, I'm going to start with a small size and then it's going to get bigger and then it's going to get smaller again. And the last part you could use for your uh, tail. Uh, and you can start seeing that this structure, the skeletal, is uh, beginning to form. Alrighty, uh, so that is that, and uh, once you like the shape, you could uh, use something like the polygon tool to create a fish a head for the fish. You could uh, make a, uh, if it's like a sword fish or something like that, you could use a ray tool to make the nose uh, longer. And then once you have it longer, uh, with the same idea, you could just define a segment on it and you could hide the ray and you could decide how long you want this nose to be. Okay, so that is that. Um, the last uh, bit you have here is the tail, so you could uh, make that any way you want. Uh, I'm going to leave it to your imagination how you would uh, continue with that. Now, uh, the last couple of things I want to show you are uh, important. Um, first, I want to show you how once you have a singleton fish, uh, actually, let's create a show hide button for the uh, pad. Let's do that before we forget. Uh, once you have a fish that you like, uh, you could definitely make this much prettier. I'm not terribly pleased with it, with the shape, but uh, you're beginning to see the idea here. Uh, what you could do is you could replicate this fish, uh, just like I have in this example here. When you look at it, you see that you have three fish moving in sync. They're slightly displaced from one another. So the way you do that effect is actually quite simple. You define what is called a vector. Uh, a vector for our purpose is just a segment, but I'm going to call this a uh, uh, vector. Um, so what I do is I select the bottom endpoint, the top endpoint. I go to transform, mark vector. 
And you notice it does a boing thing, and it basically memorizes the direction and the length um, that we're going to translate this uh, fish with. So I go to now, once I selected the uh, fish, I go to transform, translate, and it's going to ask, it gives you a preview so you could see if you like it. Uh, this is how much it's going to be translated with. Observe if I make it very small, the vector, they coincide. If I make it very far to the right, to the left, they will move accordingly. But the beauty is you don't have to do any more work. It's just uh, another fish that moves in sync. Um, now you could memorize backwards. You can start from the top to the bottom. Transform mark vector. And now again select the original uh, fish and translate it now by that backwards vector. And you're going to notice you have your school of fish. Okay. Um, the last thing that might be worth uh, showing observe the size commands all of the fish is how, well, the last thing I want to show you is how do you change the background color so it looks like uh, you're actually in water so what I do is I go to uh, let me do that again so you can see it uh, edit preferences color background color uh, choose something that reminds you of water something cool maybe like that once you OK that, the background will change. At that point, you may want to select all of your points and make them smaller. If it's too large, it might be distracting. Um, and uh, here is uh, your school of fish. With a little bit of uh, patience, you could do all kinds of things. You could have a nice tail. I'll let you figure out how you would do that. Uh, you could put some eyes at the appropriate places of the fish um, and you have some uh, graceful movement uh, uh, and this is geometry coming to life as you can see uh, all the principles we have used are purely geometric in nature uh, but the end product is uh, it looks pretty organic and sky is the limit with your imagination what you could do with what you have just learned Alrighty, I hope you had fun. Uh, look forward to seeing what you create. Take care.